First of all, thank you for having me. It's, it's always fun to meet skeptics because I'm like the opposite of a skeptic, right? I mean, I was in a cult for 30 years. So, and it's like a mind control cult. And, you know, they take you away from thinking right away. That's it. You know, like you're not thinking. And then it's like a triangle and you're, you're actually paying, right, to lose your freedoms. That's really what happens. You, you, they slowly strip away your freedoms. And people always ask me, well, how, why would you do that? You know, and, and first of all, I got in in 1969. I was in college. My dad is a professional football player. He's in the Football Hall of Fame, Paul Chrisman. <clears throat> and then he was a broadcaster. And so when he became a broadcaster, we, I grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. And really wonderful town. But then they started making a lot of money and they decided let's build our dream house and they moved to Lake Forest, which is a very wealthy northern, you know, so I lost all my friends overnight. And that, was the, that changed my life. And I always tell people this because if you have kids or grandkids, you know, or yourselves, don't ever move when your kids are in high school. Because it, it just, our whole family, it was just a mess. And my dad died then, he died at 22. And um, so I became a hippie. I went to college, quit college, went to New York, went to Haight-Ashbury, became a hippie in Haight-Ashbury, doing drugs. Not much, but enough that I got sick. <laughs> so now my parents sent me back to Lake Forest, and I'm um, talking to these kids, and they give me this Dianetics book. And I, in college, wanted to be a doctor. My grandfather was a doctor, and I thought, that's what I want to do. But now I'm in college, and I'm like, dear God, I'm not going to do four years of college, four years of medical school, internships, forget it. And I'd read these three chapters in Dianetics where you could clear someone. And I thought, well, that's sort of like being a doctor. Right? <laughs> that's why I'm saying I'm the opposite of a skeptic. So anyway, I had an argument with my dad. He said, go to bed. It's 10.30. And I said, Dad, we're, I'm in college. We've been fighting about this for years. And he said, no, you got to go to bed. It's our morals or no school. And so I wrote on my mirror, your morals or no school, screw you. And I really love my dad. But I packed my bags and I hitchhiked in 69 from Chicago to LA. Because in the back of the Dianetics book, it said St. Hill, England, or American St. Hill here. So anyway, now I'm in, I, I get here. I'm kind of a hippie. They've got all these big pictures of Hubbard. I'm like, okay, I don't really like him. How many people have read the book Blink? It, it's about your first instincts. It's a really good book. I recommend it to everyone. It's really good. But that was my first instinct. It was like, what the hell, right? <clears throat> and then the Sea Org guys were marching around in their military uniforms, and I'd been fighting the Vietnam War for two years. So I'm like, this isn't my group, right? And I should have just packed up my things and left, but did. So my friend said, just go out to the valley, stay at this guy's house, and or go in and ask for John Hildebrand first. So I walked in and I said, I want to talk to John Hildebrand. And they said, you can't. He's on course. He'll call you at 1030. I said, okay. And again, being a hippie, it's sort of like, this is weird. But I go out to the valley, get stoned with this guy. We're like on the floor laughing and good, you know, just with grass, we're goofing around. And, which I don't think they call it grass anymore, but whatever, I can't remember what they call it. So my friend told uh, me that. Weed. weed, yeah. So anyway, I'm stoned. He calls at 1035, which again, I always mention to people because you don't really realize how much time can affect someone. You know, like if he hadn't called me, I would have never been in Scientology. Wow. That, that, that's how dramatic that is. So he called me. He said, I'll be out in 15 minutes. And we both said, yeah, right. He's going to drive out to the valley at 1030. And so we get stoned again, and we're laughing. And now the doorbell rings. And I went, hi. You know, and anyway, long story short, he brings me back to American St. Hill, which is where I hitchhiked to. We stand outside. And back then, there were, there were really thousands of people in Scientology and really smart people, a lot of professors and writers and, and musicians and just cool people. And it was fun. It was way different than it is now. So he, we stood outside and he said, well, what do you really want to do? And I, because I said, what about all those pictures? He said, I oh, don't worry, that's just Hubbard. What about, 
those Sea Org uniforms, they look really weird. He goes, that's a Sea Org, that's not us. What do you want to do? And I said, I want to be an auditor, which is like a counselor. And he said, okay, let's go meet the auditors. So now we're just walking up and down this street. I think it was, um, I forget the name of it anyway. We're walking up and down the street talking to like 200 auditors that are outside. That have all, and they're all so cool, right? And I'm talking to each one of them, and I'm thinking, I love these people. And I remember the second I turned off my critical thinking. I remember it. Because I remember thinking, I don't care. I don't care what these people do. I want to be one of them. And that was it. I was in. You know what I mean? And they, people who write books about cults say they're, tr people like me were a true believer. So I'm like really in. So there's, that's how I got in. I get trained. I have epilepsy. So I join, but I don't have seizures because I take medication. So they get me to join the Sea Organization, which is a billion year contract, right? And so I join the Sea Org. I'm on a ship out in LA Harbor. I run out of my medication and I say, look, I'm, I'm out of my medication. I gotta get a refill. And he goes, well, okay, we'll send you to the MLO, which they have all these different terms for things. And I'm like, okay, what's that? And it's an 18 year old kid, totally not medically trained who says, well, you know, we're the top 10% of the planet, so we don't take medication. And we're gonna get you off your medication with Dianetics and vitamins. And I'm stupid, you know, I'm 22 years old. Like I said, I wasn't a skeptic, do you know what I mean? It just, it was like, okay, you know, it sounds good to me. So I start out on this program and I start having grand mal seizures. And the reason I mention this is because if I get off on things, I can't get back. So I need somebody in the audience that has a good memory who can kind of follow what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> like a friend came the other day to help me with my computer and he said, you know, you're amazing. Like I have five million follow, uh, follow, or views on my YouTube site, right? And it, but I don't know anything about computers. And he's like, I can't believe you. And I said, I know, and I, I can't ever remember anything. And he goes, but you only need one word. And it's true, it's like I can get off onto something and then I'll go, what was I talking about? And they'll go, Lake Forest, and I'm back, I'm good. So anyway, I mention it for that reason, if, if I get off on my things, it. ah! But also it shows the abuse of Scientology, that's the way they are. You know, where they, may, most of them don't take medicine, many of them die of cancer, which was interesting that we had that thing on cancer because they won't let them take medicine, so they, I mean, tons, I mean, thousands of people. My brother was over in Spain, and he said, Tori, I have to ask you this question. I know one person who's died. This was like 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And he said, every time I talk to you, another one of your good friends has died. Just think about it. That's all he said, you know, which is really good for, because when you're in a mind control cult, did, how many of you saw the Truman Show? Yeah. Okay, that's Scientology. That's exactly how it is. And if you watch it again and again, I mean, it's exactly how it's run. And you, the person, are like Truman. You're in the show. And all the people, like my ex-husband is still in the show. He divorced me, stayed in the show. But he was born in the show, too. You know, his parents were in the show in 1950. So anyway, but my son, I got out. And I know now 17 kids who've killed themselves, all Scientologists. So I always tell people, I do this every day. I, I carry cards, they're like business cards that have websites that have information. And when I see a young person, I say, look, your life is in danger. And they go, really? And I go, yeah. And they go, why? And they go, Scientology, you're like three blocks from them. And they go, I've always wondered about that. You know, and I go, exactly. So here's my card. And I want you to start learning about it because there's other cults too. And if you learn about it, you'll never get in it. But if you don't know about it, you can. They're good at what they do. So, um, see there, now I forgot what I was saying. Scientology. <laughs> that helped. Thank you. Thank you. The MLO officer. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the medical liaison officer. So I get off my medicine. Now I'm having grand mal seizures. They route me out of the sea or because of that. And my mother starts calling me going, Tori, these people are going to kill you. And I'm like, no, no, mom, it's okay. I'm going to do Dianetics. It'll really fix it. And she's like, no, it's not a psychosomatic illness. It's a physical illness and you need your medicine. So anyway, thank God she stayed on it. And as my memory got worse and worse, she started getting 
tied her with me and she said, okay, what are you doing tonight? And I said, I'm going out on a date. And I, I mean, it's hard for me to believe looking back that I went through that and didn't just walk out. But most people stay because of their friends. And I, I wasn't married yet, but I really loved the people that were in, except for the creepy guys that run it. But anyway, <laughs> that's a different thing. So I, my mother says, I'll call you tonight. And she goes, all right. And I said, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm, I'm going out on a date. She goes, all right, I'll call you tomorrow. And she calls me the next day and she goes, how was your date? And I go, what date? <laughs> and my mom's father's a doctor. And I know they were talking anyway. And she goes, Tori, either you're on your medication today and your doctors call me today and say, you're back on your medication or I am going to be flying from Chicago out to LA. And remember, my dad was a broadcaster with NBC and I knew they had all kinds of media lines, and I knew my mom, she could kick ass. And I thought, she's not gonna just fly out here and ball them up, because she said, L. Ron Hubbard and the Church of Scientology will never forget your mother, oh. right? So I got back on my medicine, and for me it was wonderful, because who wants to have a seizure, right? Yeah. It's awful. But it was awful, because everyone in Scientology treats you like you're a degraded being, because you're on medication. Like, how could you be on medication? So anyway. I stay, I get married, I have my son. You know, everything's pretty good, you know, because we're public now. We're not Sea Org, we're just public. And we're kind of going up the bridge to total freedom. It's not really working, but whatever, it is. It is what it is. So now, I roll forward, it's in the 90s, and my auditor, which is like a counselor, says, look, I need your help. These people are on the internet. They're ruining our church. And I said, really? And we knew nothing about the church, except David Miscavige had an event. And he said, OK, the world is going on the internet. So we want all of you to write up your story, go over to the computers and write up your story. So we write up our story. They plugged in the Way to Happiness Narcan on all their little front groups on the bottom, which we didn't know that's what it was. And then they hand you a DVD. And they go, and I go, what's this? And they go, well, put it on your computer. And I go, why would I do that? And they go, well, you have a great story. People are going to want to talk to you. No one ever called me. What it was was it was the net nanny where it blocked out any critical information. So Scientologists can only see a piece of blue sky. Mm -hmm. Or now they're just totally self-centered where, or censored where they won't look. They just won't look. They can't look. Because it's a high crime. You have to go to ethics. and It's a big, big pain in the ass. So he says to me, I need you. And this was kind of, a, I'm telling you this because it was the major part of my waking up. He says, I need you to open up this phony account. And I say, for what? And he goes, I'm not going to tell you. Because if I tell you, they'll get you in deposition. And then you'll be in deposition forever. These are really evil people. And I go, okay, all right, I'll do it. So I go in. He goes, I think you're the only person that can do it, which, of course, they, they know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I get it open, and he, I come back, and he has a grin like as big as California, right? And I go, what's up? And he goes, you just changed the history of the Internet. That's it. And it's like, I say, how can I change the history of the Internet when I don't even know what it is, right? At least I had a little bit of skepticism, but not much. So <laughs> then they, now they're flying me around, the United States of America opening up phony accounts. And all I have to do is get an email and a password. I'm using a cashier's check to open it up. So nothing can be traced to Scientology, right? And I'm telling you guys this, just so you know, this is the darker side of Scientology. Most people in, I'd say 99% of the people in, don't know this side of it. But they just, they knew I was gullible and they knew I, I was a true believer and I would help them out, so I did. So I'm opening up these phony accounts. They're getting more mafia-like. We had lived in Lake Forest where the mafia, the heads of the mafia in Chicago lived. So I kind of knew the mafia, and I hated David Miscavige. Hubbard had died, and Miscavige took over. And I thought, you know, it's not beyond Miscavige to hire the mafia to kill these people on the internet, right? That's my thinking. So I think I better go look, because I haven't looked and seen what they're doing. And this is back in... 19, I think 99, 2000, and they had alt-religion Scientology, which is all a, um, are you guys interested in this at all? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, this Okay, okay. I feel like, ah, maybe I'm like really too weird. I am weird. That's what I always tell people. Just trust me on that. I'm going to First time I heard about you. Pardon me? All religion Scientology is the first right. time I heard about you. And that's all linear. I don't know if you guys were ever on those sites. It was back with Usenet and stuff like that. But it was all linear. They didn't have websites and all this stuff. It was all like one topic. And Scientology's idea, I found out, was if they could drive the topic down onto the second page, no one would read it, which is kind of true. Yeah. Very few people do read the second page. And so somebody would come on. I remember I'd opened these 10 accounts for my auditor, Bill Yachty. They knew if the Office of Special Affairs, which is their PR and legal and really their dirty tricks department, I knew if they knew if they asked me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. But Yachty, who was my auditor, was just like, Tori, we really need your help. You know, and I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So I'd open these 10 accounts for him. And now they're driving down. Like somebody come on and say, L. Ron Hubbard's a liar. He says he has two wives. He really had three. They don't want anybody to see that. So right away they come on with some other shit. And Bill would come on and say, well, you know, I don't really think that's important. And nobody would say anything. So now he'd come in as Mary Sue. And he'd say, why are you talking about L. Ron Hubbard? You know, this is so boring. Anyway, he just kept coming on as another identity until finally a real critic would come on and go, well, I think... You know, you're talking about golf. I'm a golfer. I think this is an important topic to take up. And he'd be like, bingo. Okay, we're good. Because now they're all the way off Scientology onto golf. You see what I mean? That's their whole goal. Do you get it? Yeah. You, you're not sure? Push well, the it's. Topic down so that the critical stuff that they don't want you to see is down here. Yeah, they're pushing it they down. The other stuff at the top. Love so that when new users look at it, they're only seeing the stuff that is. They're not seeing the criticism. Not the page. It's like a and they had three goals. As they drive down the shop, you're not seeing it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and they had three goals. One was distract off of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. David Miscavige, right? They didn't want anything talked about that. So that would be the 10 identities going, oh, bop, 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 bop. I played golf today or, you know, whatever, anything. I, I cooked a bake, I baked a cake today and other people would go, well, I love to bake too. And it's like, good, now we're off onto baking. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, the second one is divide and conquer. And they are doing that to this day where people are fighting with each other that are people that are out of the church but they get them they're still working on it and I've talked about it for 23 years telling people about this but you know you can lead a horse to water you can't make them drink and the third one is just slime the area so and I said why would you do that I just found this out right before I left and he said um, who's going to want to post somewhere where it's all just junk and I said yeah that's the point so those are their three goals of OSA, as far as the internet. That, that's what they work on. So anyway, I'm opening these accounts. They're getting more mafia-like. I'm thinking maybe Miscavige is a mafia guy, because I don't know him. I never met him. And I thought maybe he's really from the mafia. And so I go on ARS thinking, I'm not with them. I've, had a, I've already had a... I, I, what happened was I had called up and said, look, I can't do this anymore, Bill. I've got to go back to work. And he said, okay, no problem. Just meet us at this apartment in Glendale. And I think, okay, now these are all people I know, right? So I walk in, it's all men, they're all big men, they're all, it's real dim lights. I'm the only lady. I walk in, normally they're like, Tori, hi. They're all like this, hello. And I'm like, okay, something's weird. And Bill isn't there, right? Oh. And so I'm thinking, okay, where's Bill, right? And all of a sudden, bam, the door slams open, and Gavino comes walking in with Bill, and he goes, I warned you about her. I warned you about her. And this is my best friend, right? And my auditor. I'm like, he warned you about what? And they just pounded me for like two hours, like, what are you going to say? Who would you tell? And I honestly, at that point, I had no intentions of saying anything to anyone. I was just going to leave. That was it. Done. But no, they had to keep picking on me, and I finally just burst out crying, ran out, Bill came running after me. I knew he realized I fucked up, and pardon my language. But anyway, 
<laughs> okay. But anyway, he, he came after me. I jumped in my car. I said, get away from me. And I drove home. I'm crying. My husband has been in and out of town because he's like a salesperson on the road. So he's home now. And he's like, why are you crying? And I said, I can't tell you. You know, because I had already signed a thing. It's a $100,000 thing that I couldn't tell anyone. I couldn't tell David Miscavige, their top executives, any auditors, any ethics officers, any, anything, any of my friends, my husband, no one. And I said, well, what about me? What if I need help? And he goes, Tori, we have the top auditors and ethics officers that will help you believe me on this. Mm -hmm. So I did believe him. You know, I'm a true believer, and I really think he, he wouldn't lie to me, right? So now, here I am, roll forward. I'm in this little apartment with these guys pounding me to death, and I'm thinking, what happened to the best auditors in the world, right? You know, so I run out, I leave, and I really left Scientology that night. You know, it was just like, I didn't get into Scientology to stop free speech. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to tell you. I finally started making, four, I made 4,000 posts in four weeks on the internet. And one of them, thank God, I finally looked, and it was all baking recipes. And, and in between the baking recipes were critics saying, I didn't say that, Scientology is changing my words. And I thought, I didn't get into Scientology to stop free speech, and that's why I called Bill and said, I can't do it anymore, because of that, seeing them changing free speech. So now, okay, so now I'm out. I'm, I'm not out of Scientology, but I did get my son out. The first kid hung himself, and I took my son to SeaWorld, and I said, look, you know, this is, if you're going to kill yourself, because I'm already thinking Scientology is weird at this point. And I say, if you're going to kill yourself, it's not going to be one death, it's going to be two, because I'll be dead five minutes later. Right, right. And luckily, he bursts out laughing and goes, don't worry, Mom, it's not in the cards. And I said, okay, let's go on to plan B. If you don't want to do Scientology, you tell me right now, because you don't have to. I think it's my religion, but it's getting really weird, right? And he goes, I don't want to do it. I said, okay, then you're out, you're done. Just don't tell your dad because he was born in it, which his dad knows now. But, you know, for a while, he, he was out on his own he, by himself, you know, because I was still not fully out. And then I got on the Internet. <clears throat> I figured I'll just put myself in with the critics, which I felt were like cowboys in the old days. You know, they could say what they wanted. They could go where they wanted. They could talk what they wanted. Whereas in Scientology, as you get higher, my husband was the top. I was right next to him, Right. You can't say anything, you can't read anything, you can't look at anything, and they're like, we're counting on you not to be looking at this stuff. This is vital. You know, just leave it alone. These are evil people, right? Which now, just so you know, last Christmas, they told a brand new person, I'm not just an SP, which is a suppressive person, I'm an undercover CIA agent. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I can't remember anything, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> You're wiping your brain. <laughs> I know, exactly. So now, um, where was I? You're my man. Where was I? Okay, so he's not going to kill himself. We're good on that. And so I'm like, Oh, yeah, I put myself in with the cowboys, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm going to put myself in with the cowboys. Like cowboys yeah, and so I'm like, okay, I'll be in with the cowboys. Maybe somebody will help me. And that's exactly what happened. I couldn't look at anything. So if you, you can do a, the Wayback Machine and go back and read, and I was Miss Magoo 55 at the time, and it just sounds like an insane person, right? And so <laughs> I'm just making these crazy posts because... You know, like I got this one guy's name, Phil Scott, and I really could remember his name. So I said, let's do a fundraiser for Phil Scott. He's going to uh, Hawaii. We can get flippers for him. You know, it's just sort of like these people are like, what is wrong with this person? And my nickname was Magoo, which was my dad's nickname that I gave him. Because he has little, see, I have like little tiny eyes. <laughs> and he had little tiny eyes. And he was funny on, on, for football. He, a lot of football players, old ones, say he kind of helped move it from the leather helmets into this big national thing because he was funny and he got people to understand what, what's going on here, right? And here I am. See, I get off on those little things and then I go, what the hell was I talking about? 
But so like the most ridiculous things on, yeah. on all religions. Let's do 55. You're posting online. <laughs> okay, right. So I'm posting online. Thank you. And and see why I have to say the thing about epilepsy. It's like, I don't know, what's wrong with this person? <laughs> right, we got you. <laughs> Thank you. I um, I have no idea. This was just something I found out this last Christmas. I this is a new title. I'm going to get a T-shirt. I'm an undercover top secret CIA agent per Scientology. <laughs> And then I'm going to have on the back www.zenu.net because that was their big secret word, Zenu. Don't ever say that. Okay. So, no, you say it, but they said don't ever say it. Yeah. Okay, so um, I got them. I'm in with the cowboys. I start making these 4,000 posts. And this guy, Andreas, who's in Norway, who created zenu.net, which is a huge website. He just passed away this yeah. year. But in very young and in his 50s, it was like, oh. But anyway, he was in Norway and someone was suing the Church of Scientology and he said, why would, why would there be a suit with a church and a Norwegian? And so he started researching way back in the early 90s and found all these, you know, he read Scientology, how wonderful it is and all this stuff. And then he started reading Paulette Cooper's stuff and just different horror stories. So he said, I'm gonna make a website with all this, the information, all the facts, you know, how Hubbard had lied and the scavenge ripped off the church and, you know, just different things. He had all the factual stuff behind it. So he says to me, I think he's the devil, because I had seen his website. And I was like, see, oh, new? You know, how can he have that? Because his thing is www.xenu.net. That's his topic, right? I mean, that's the name of the website. He calls it Operation Clambake, but anyway, that's a different thing that I never got. Um, uh oh. Is she okay? Okay. All right. So um, he says to me, Magoo, nobody can understand what you're saying. You're not formatting. Now remember, I know nothing about computers. And I'm like, Andreas, and again, you can never, ever talk to someone who's declared suppressive. And this is, I brought my SP declared just so you can see. Oh. <laughs> They never give them out. Amazing. They never give them out, but I, and Jesse Prince told me that. He said, yeah, they never give them out. I, I thought, I'm going to get mine, and I got it, and I laminated it. And on the back, it says, her only terminal is the international justice chief via the continental justice chief, and they'll never talk to me. So I go and sit on their buildings, and I go, I'm sorry. I have to have the international justice chief or the continental justice chief. <laughs> Wait, how did you get that? Because, well, let me finish this. Okay. Remind that, remember that question. Yeah. No, I don't have friends. I, I just knew they never give them out. Yeah. I'm going to finish it if you remember where okay. I was. Okay, because okay. it was with Andreas. So to finish how I got my SP to clear, yeah. I knew they don't give them out, right? They, they, they used to. They used to post them in the org. And, you know, you'd go and read all these people there crimes and everything and be like oh my god he did this he did that so they realized okay don't post them anymore so then they stopped posting them but they would send them to you but after a while it was just such bad pr they by the time i left jesse prince told me now nah, they don't ever give them out anymore so now i this is all out of sequence of what i'm talking about but i'll come back to it but after i escape out i come back home and I go to get my receipts because they have money of mine and I want it. Yeah. So I call Flag, which is in Clearwater, Florida, and I say, I want to talk to Treasury. And she goes, or he goes, it was a guy, and goes, who is this? And I said, it's, it's Tori Bizazian, which was my married name. And he goes, hang on. And he puts me through to the Continental Justice Chief. And she goes, hi, this is the Continental Justice Chief. Would you like to know why you're talking to the Continental Justice Chief? And I said, I really would. I'm kind of curious about that. Of course, I know. Right? <laughs> she goes, well, you've been declared a suppressive person. And just so you guys know, they have a big thing from day one. If it isn't in writing, it isn't true. That was Hubbard's thing. You know, it's like if he doesn't say it, it's not true. And I knew she was like 18 or something. So I knew this would push her buttons. And so I said, you know, you might be too young to know this policy. 
but there's a policy if it isn't in writing it isn't true and I have nothing in writing and she goes I'll have it to you in 24 hours and she FedExed it to me so that's why I laminated it <laughs> thank you so anyway back to my thing with Andrea so Andrea says you're not formatting he teaches me how to format and my mother was always really big on if someone helps you write them a thank you note so now I mean, it's a high crime. It's like a mortal, mortal, mortal sin to talk to a suppressive person. But I'm in my house. I'm all alone. My husband's out of town. There's a little blue link, which is an email link, right? And I think, I kind of look around like, is anybody going to see me? And I think, they're not. And I click on it, and I just write, Dear Andreas, thank you for helping me, Magoo, right? And he writes me back, and he goes, Dear Magoo, you're welcome. Andreas Helderland and his complete address, his complete phone number, his complete cell phone number. And I tell people this so you realize, you know, like that changed my life again. You know, it's like if he hadn't done that, I would have agreed, yeah, he's a really evil guy. He's got this, all this stuff up. But because he gave me his whole address and phone number, it was like, how bad can the guy be, right? He's really being transparent. So. I write him a thing, and because I'd already taken down a message board. There was a message, remember Battlefield Earth? Yeah. Right. So I was in when Battlefield Earth came out and went with the Office of Special Affairs to make sure no evil people got to John Travolta, who I trained. So now after the Battlefield Earth thing, the premiere, they had a secret party. And we went to the secret party to make sure no bad people got to John Travolta. But I trained John Travolta, so he comes up to me, he goes, Tori, and he gives me a big hug. And so I thought, I want to go into the secret party. So, and I'm good at slipping in places, so I just thought, I'm going to do it. So I get this tall guy, and I just walk in, and he had to have a badge. And he goes, well, where's your badge? And I looked at him, like, come on, man, give me a break. You know, I didn't say anything, and he goes, all right, go on. So I go in, and, and Travolta was talking to another actor, and I thought, I'm not going to bug him. But I thought, what could I do? I know, I'm going to get some drinks for the guys at OSA that run OSA, right? You know, they're outside. And so I bring out these two drinks, and I, it's Yachty, who was the guy that got me into this, and the head of the Office of Special Affairs. And I said, I really want to congratulate you two on your top secret, you know, whole secret party here. You know, because here I am, went inside, got drinks to bring them out, right? You know, it's like... <laughs> Just, I was waking up, right? So anyway, I'm talking to Andreas and online, and he says, you're not formatting, and he teaches me how to format. Because what happened was this. Let's say you say something, and then I say something. On those old, you know, things, they'd have all these arrows between them, saying, you said something, now Tori said something. But I only knew how to copy-paste. That's all that Bill taught me how to do. So I thought, ah, oh, who needs all these stupid arrows? So I had to erase them. <laughs> so everything is like this well, they already think I'm insane because I'm posting all these insane things and now I'm not formatting so it's totally insane so he teaches me how to format and it works and I'm like oh my god this is the devil and he taught me how to format <laughs> it was really I mean, truly it was shocking and so then I, I, I thought, you know, maybe, and oh, I didn't finish the thing about Battlefield Earth. They had a little message board, and on it was my friend Mark Bunker, who had a thing, yeah. Xenu TV, X-E-N-U TV. Mm -hmm. And, of course, back then, nobody knew the word Xenu, and so I kept calling him the fat TV guy and all this stuff, and I'm, like, trying to get him to stop being Xenu, which, of course, he's not going to do. So finally, I call up Warner Brothers, because I'm in sales, I know how to get through to the right person, and I, I say, I want to know who's running the message board. And, okay, it's me, no, it's not you. you know. And I get all the way up to the top guy, and I say, look, I, I live in Burbank, I'm a fan of John Travolta's, and you've got all this stuff on your message board that's just yuck about Scientology. I want this taken, you know, at least get that stuff off of there. And he says, okay, I'll report it. And I think, okay, nothing's going to happen. And the next day I go, is this Tori Bazazian? And I go, it is. You know, I'm on the phone, right? The guy calls and he goes, this is Mr. So-and-so from New York, Time Warner. And we got your message and we're going to take down the Battlefield Earth message board. And I'm like, woo -hoo! You know, so I was pretty excited about that. Now I think, I, 
Duh, because I just think there's only 50 people on the message board. There were probably 25 on the message board. So I think alt religion Scientology is probably only 50, right? That's what I'm thinking, not knowing it's thousands. And so I think, well, I bet I can get Andreas to take it down. So I say, dear Andreas, why do you have up all this stuff about my religion? And he writes back, I mean, the guy was like so, he was a skeptic extraordinaire. Yeah. I mean, he was just amazing. And he writes back and he goes, Dear Magoo, I believe in truth. I believe in looking at both sides. I don't think, um, and I have the courage to say what I think. I don't think Scientologists are bad. They're just misinformed. I suggest you start reading. Now, I'd always wanted to go back in the Sea Org. So I look on ARS and there's this thing by Mary Tabioyan saying, ladies, if you're thinking of joining the Sea Org, read this. Now again, you have to remember Scientology is very factioned off. So most public like me, and even Sea Org didn't know about this. But I read her story and they made her, she got pregnant and they made her get an abortion. So it was just like, you know, it was just this horror story of how they made her, they drove her over there, they made her get an abortion, and then she had to be back on post the next day. And I'm just crying. I'm, I'm in my dining room where my computer was, and I just, I couldn't stop crying. And I, I knew oh, this is it. That's it. That's the end of it. I, I, I can't do Scientology anymore. That's it. I don't care if I lose all my friends. I'm done. I'm going to lose my husband. It's like, I'm just done. That's it. And, and so I cry for four hours and I can't stop crying. I just can't, it's just so much, you know what I mean? It's just so, it's everything in my life that I've been is gone. And so I, I'm like, what am I gonna do? And so I write Andreas and I say, Andreas, I can't stop crying and I can't talk to anybody. If I, if I talk to my friends, they're gonna leave me. And he goes, dear Magoo, I'm crying reading your email. Oh. I got to I know. I got to ask you this one question. What kind of friends could those be if they're going to leave you because you changed your mind? Wow. Great question, huh? And that was it for me. I, my Truman show cracked open. I was like that is it, man. He's right. They're not my friends. And so then it was like I've got to get out of here because I've always kept my dad kind of close to me even though he died at 22, but he was really courageous and smart and I really loved him. And so I kind of plug into my dad, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And, he, and I just get, get out of L.A. I don't care what you do, just get out of L.A. Because I'm like 15 minutes from the Office of Special Affairs, right? And they, they'll come get me. But I don't know anything about all. I don't believe it. They had been sending me out for two years to handle the critics who were picketing. They were picketing the Church of Scientology. And I, I'd go out and talk to them, and they'd leave. And I'd go back in and they'd say, what did you do? How'd you get them to leave? And I'd say, I just talked to them. They're just people. You know, they're people with different viewpoints than we have. That's all. So anyway, I was kind of used to talking and hearing them say Scientology does all these evil things. But I had kind of plexiglass up, just thinking, yeah, it's not true. It's not true. So now, Stacy, I say to Andres, I have to talk to someone who knows what I'm going through. I'm freaking out. You know, I have to talk to someone. So these three people had started. Have you ever heard of Lisa McPherson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Scientology basically took care of her, and she ended up dead after 17 days. And they killed her, basically, is what happened. But um, I forgot what I was saying because I got off on the thinking about Lisa. Andres. Um, the, the three people that did the Lisa McPherson Trust. Yeah. Oh yeah, so Stacy, Bob, and Jesse, right. And they're, they're in Clearwater, Florida, and they started the Lisa McPherson Trust in honor of her. Mark Booker. Well, was it really Stacy, Bob, and Jesse? Yeah. Mark was the film guy for it. Right. Yeah. So um, Stacy sends me an email, and she goes, Do, Dear Magoo, who are you? Because they all thought I was a guy, because I, I was like, fuck you, you know, and stuff like that. I was swearing all the time, so they all thought I was a guy. So now she goes, who are you? And I said, I, dear, dear Stacy, you know, I really appreciate you writing me, but I, I can't tell you. I just can't. I, I, you know, you have to remember back to when you woke up. I mean, because I didn't know maybe she's Osa, right? How do I know? So I, I didn't trust her. So I was like, I, I can't say. So this is an important thing. She goes, dear Magoo, I get an email and it's from Stacy Brooks. And I think, oh, she's going to help me. And imagine I'm all by myself. And I'm like, ah, she's going to help me. And so I open it up. You know, it's an email. I open it up and it goes, Dear Magoo, sorry we can't help you. 
<laughs> Stacy Brooks. <clears throat> and that was it. And it's like, I realized, you know, there are points in your life where you're up on a cliff. You know, I felt like I was like a thousand feet up, nude, and way at the bottom was this little sign that said, you might make it if you jump. <gasps> so I thought, you know what? I got to make the leap. And I have a big sign in my house that says, leap and the net will appear. Mm. Isn't that a good, a good thing? So I made the leap and she called me. She goes, Tori, we used to audit together. You, you know me. You know what I mean? It was just, I was like, it's so great. And she goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you know, just flipped out. And she goes, well, why don't you come visit us in Clearwater? And I said, I can't afford it. And she goes, we'll fly you there. And Bob Minton, who helped start Lisa McPherson, was a multimillionaire. So Bob gets on the phone and goes, look, I'll get you a ticket. And I didn't even know about electronic tickets back then. This is in 2000, July 2000. And so he goes, just go to LAX, or, or maybe it was Burbank. I can't remember. But anyway, he goes, just go to the airport. There will be a ticket there. And that's it. No, it was LAX because it was, it was a long ride, I remember. <laughs> yeah, so we go. So I, I think, okay, I, I call a van. Okay, I'm going to leave at 8.30 in the morning, and I'm there. I'm all ready with my little suitcase and stuff. And 8.30 in the morning, nothing. And quarter to nine, nothing. And so now I call the van, and I go, what, what's the deal? Like, where's my van? And they said, oh, somebody anonymously called and canceled your van. And it was like, that was honestly the first time I realized all this stuff these critics had been saying for years to me was true, right? That they do do this shit. So now I finally start calling around and every, uh, coincidentally on a Wednesday, every tra everything to go to the airport is booked, which they probably booked it all, right? So I couldn't get out there. So I finally, I'm a I'm very determined person when I get my mindset to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I get, I get a van, we get out to the LAX, and now the plane's canceled. And I think, can Travolta cancel a plane? You know, I just, I, I'm like way out of my league, right? So I walk in, and Stacy had said, bring a phone. And this is like, we all had phones now, but back in 2000, we had those little flip phones. It was like an emergency phone. In case you're in an emergency, have a phone. So she had said, bring a phone. And I said, Stacy, they don't do stuff like that. And she said, Tori, we used to run these programs. We know what we're talking about. Bring a phone. So I bring my little flip phone thinking she's crazy. She's making it up. You know, it's not that bad. But now I'm inside LAX and up comes these, you know, I hear the high heels coming down the way. And it's the vice president of the Church of Scientology. And she's like, we know where you're going you're not going there. And I get on my little cell phone, and I go, Stacy, the vice president is here. And she goes, okay, do not sit down on the phone. I'm gonna put Jesse on. And Jesse gets on. Jesse used to help run the Church of Scientology with Miscavige. <clears throat> and he's a really cool guy. And he goes, all right, listen to me carefully. Do not sit down on the phone. No matter what you do, do not sit down on the phone. If you go to the bathroom, don't sit down on the phone, because they'll get you. And I said, okay, okay. And so he, so he goes, we're going to get you another ticket. So now I'm kind of going, I have to get on a van. And I figure if she's going to follow me, she can carry my stupid luggage. Jesus. So I say, here, you carry my luggage. I, you know, I got to get on the van. <laughs> so, now, so now the vice president is walking along behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I get on the van, and I think, you know, you've seen all these movies where someone says, I'm escaping from a horrible thing, like Tina Turner, shit like that. So I think, maybe this guy will help me. So I go, look, I'm escaping from a cult, and she's the vice president. <laughs> Can you help me? And he goes, do you want to get on the van or not? <laughs> it was such a bummer, but I got on the van. She got on the van with my luggage. We get off. She's following me everywhere, and she's writing everything down, and I have to go here, there, whatever. And now I finally say to Bob, I'm on the phone with him, and I say, Bob, honestly, I can't get rid of her. She's, she's everywhere. She's following me everywhere. And he goes, okay, I got it. He goes, tell you what, I'm going to get you a first-class ticket. You can go into a special lounge. She can't get in there. So, you know, then you'll get rid of her. So I get in the lounge. I get on the plane, and I think, oh. 
I'm free. I'm done with Scientology. And there was many, many more things that happened in between it. But just because I only have so much time, I'm like, okay, I'm free. This is good. But I'm just going to tell you the rest of it. So now we get off in Chicago, right? And we have to change planes. And guess who walks up to me? My husband, Tori. What are you doing here? Now, if he had said, Tori, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you. I need to know what's going on. I would have stayed with him, but he didn't. He said, Tori, what are you doing? We need to go on a vacation. Now, I knew vacation for the Office of Special Affairs is they'll lock you up in a, you know, and no, they don't tell you this, but I just somehow, I know it happens. It happened with Lisa. You know, they lock you up and... God knows what happens. I don't, I don't, but I wasn't going there. But when he said vacation, I knew, okay, this guy isn't on the same page as I am at all. <clears throat> I said, look, I'm getting on that plane. And he goes, well, I'm going with you. And by now, the Office of Special Affairs shows up. And I said, I thought you were just here by accident. And he goes, well, okay, they're here too. <laughs> so I said, no, you're not getting on a plane with me because I knew... What would happen is he, they would fly in Yachty, who was our best friend and auditor. They would fly in Harold, and Harold and Yachty would say, look, it's us or them, these evil people. And I, I knew I wouldn't be able to do it. You know, it's like my husband of 26 years, and my best friend, and my auditor. You know, it just, I thought, you're not going to make it, Tori. You're not. And, and, and I figured, I have a right to go and make sure these other guys aren't OSA. And then I'll come back and get Harold. That was my plan. That's my husband. So, so I said, look, I'm going to get on that plane, and you are not. And if you get on that plane, I, Tori, am calling the police, yeah, yeah. which is a big no-no in Scientology, like yeah. I said. So he doesn't get on the plane. So I think, okay, good, I'm done. And it doesn't land in Tampa until 1.45 in the morning. And I knew from being there for seven years their vans only go till midnight out to the airport. <clears throat> of course, I didn't know about this shit. So I get off the, the thing thinking, okay, I'm done. There's going to be nobody there except St Stacy, Bob, and Jesse. Wrong. My, a friend of mine is leaping up and down with a big mob of Scientologists, the police, and Stacy, Bob, and Jesse over here, right? And, and she's like, Tori, Tori, you've got to talk to me. Now, you have to know, I left Scientology because of David Miscavige. That's it. I have epilepsy. I was 100 pounds overweight. <clears throat> I was on this top level. I kept saying it's not working. I have to lose this weight. You know, my dad died of a heart attack. You know, it's like this is a really serious thing. And I would just get back, okay, continue. Okay, continue. And I thought, you know, I hate this guy. I really do. So now she goes like this, Tori, I just want to let you know one thing. I can get a message to David Miscavige tonight, whatever you want to tell him. And I said, really? You can get a message to David Miscavige tonight? Well, you tell him this. I pick them. Oh, right. <laughs> so it's almost over. So the police all go, stand back. She has to pick. That's when I went. I picked them. And then they, the police escorted us out. And that wow. was, you know, nice. I've been an activist ever since. They, in that trip that I've just told you now, turned me from, I'm not going to talk. Because I called Stacy. I said, I'm not going to speak out. I'm not going to make... I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make videos. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just leaving under the radar. But in that time from LAX to Tampa, I became an activist. Yeah. I was like, you know, screw you guys. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell people what, I, I know a lot, and I'm going to tell them, and I did. And you can look up Wikipedia, and I wanted to mention that, because somebody, who did the Wikipedia thing? I, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't write your page. No, no, but this is a fun story about it. But we wrote, we just rewrote uh, Andreas's just before he died. Oh. We just redid it because it was not oh. good. So we just redid it. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that means so much to me. Yeah, it was, it was a good page. We also wrote Tony's page. Okay. Oh, thank you. And about 10 other pages. Wow. Scientology related. Yeah. Cool. Just now you need to write Tom Cruise's page. Oh, no, it's already there. It's already there. <laughs> well, Wikipedia would call me every month. Okay, this happened, what's the backstory? And I would tell him. Oh, somebody, somebody. It was the same guy all the time. So now it's gone on for a couple of years and somebody makes a Wikipedia site for me and it's about four paragraphs, right? 
And, but I'm noticing it's being whittled down. And I know because of the top secret accounts, they're going onto Wikipedia and Are editing it. Yeah, this is when it was just four, four paragraphs. We'll, we'll take care of that. <laughs> no, no. Listen to, what ha- listen to what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen to what happened. I'm telling you, they, they picked the wrong person. They always do, right? You know, they should have just let me go. I would have been fine. But anyway, they didn't. And this guy keeps calling. And I give him the backstory. Bop, 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 bop. And finally, I start looking at Hubbard's and the church, and I go, you know what? They're covertly editing Wikipedia. And he goes, okay. You know, he, he doesn't really care. He just wants the story right then. But after so many years of me saying, look, they are covertly editing Wikipedia, he finally goes, okay, that's it. We're having an investigation, and you, we want you on it. I said, no. And he goes, why not? And I said, because you're going to decide, I guarantee that they're, that they're covertly editing Wikipedia. And they're going to say, because Tori's on the board, it's all negated. We've got to start all over again without her. Right. So I said, you guys do your own investigation and call me and let me know what happened. Mm-hmm. And the guy calls me and he goes, all right, I want you out at the Aero Theater that we're doing a presentation on how to use Wikipedia. And they have a DVD that they've gotten out to all the colleges, most of the high schools. Now they're going into grade schools on how to use Wikipedia, right? And in the middle of it, it says some people are covertly editing Wikipedia. And it has this big red X and it goes, the Church of Scientology, banned for life. You know, so I was really happy about yeah. that. And I told the guy at the end, I raised my hand because they had Q&A and I said, just so you know, I opened those phony accounts. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> I've always been transparent on it. I mean, I did. And I said, you know, if, if you ever, need, you know, if they ever try to sue you, I'm your person. And they were so thankful, you know, because it's like, I can attest to it. And some of the critics have photographs of me opening a phony account. So, I like, remember, oh, it was over 10 years ago, that you came over to CFILA right. in Hollywood. Right. And um, you, you had a uh, cast on your wrist. You had right. broken your wrist. Right. I remember that very specifically. And I never forgot that the thought that you chose your life over your family. Not my son. I got my son out first. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have chosen. If, if, I guess I didn't remember it that clearly. I didn't say it. I was very terrified of them hurting my son no, for a long time. I didn't know. No, so I didn't say anything. People would ask me. Remember, if you remember, at that thing, somebody said, "What about your son?" And I said, "It's none of your business." I mean, I was really mean about it, but it was like, "Don't even start," because I knew Scientology. Sent, and I told you guys that. I said, they send people to these lectures yeah. to try to distract off of what you're doing. And so they already had been warned, and then they brought up my son. I said, it's none of your business. You know, for a long, long time. But now we, we get together all the time. Because I told him, I said, there's no disconnection in this family. I mean, with the, you and I. You know, you can't disconnect, which is their thing. If you're declared suppressive, you have to disconnect. So he didn't. And now he's doing great. He's just really doing great. I see him every two weeks. I do. And I, it's just wonderful. I mean, he's, I saw him last night. And it's just like, I just love him. He's a really wonderful person. You've come out of a really, when you seem very together. Oh, isn't it fun? Like now, it's so fun because I'm not. But, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but... But it's so fun, like now they have these live streamers. Do any of you guys know about them? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So Scientology, I was telling you that, they have a thing, like with me, like I'm not, do you know Anonymous? Yeah, yes. Well, we okay, don't so, know. We don't know but them. I mean, you know of them. They are anonymous. So, so yeah, we were picking, we were, they were, they made their thing with the Church of Scientology that they were gonna shut them down. Right. And I thought it was OSA, of course. And so I made a post about it. So they called me. They go, this is anonymous. And I'm like, I'm in my bedroom, you know, kind of freaked out. And they had kind of not exactly the smartest plans originally. And I said, you're way out of your league. These guys are highly litigious. They will put you in prison. So they said, well, what can we do? And I said, let's pick it. You know, that's, if, we pro- if we peacefully pick it. So we did. And then now I forgot how I got onto anonymous. The live, the live streaming. 
Just oh yeah, right. So thank you. So so that was back then, you know, where they had the and back and and they have a thing. Anonymous used to tie me, and I'd just put my foot on L. Ron Hubbard way, and they'd go, "She shut him down in three minutes." They'd have the entire place evacuated, you know, everybody inside, locked inside, just because of me. So I would do the thing like the Field of Dreams where he put his hand in the corn. And, and I, would, I would put my foot, you know, like over the thing. So now, roll forward last week, or it was about uh, two or three weeks ago, a bunch of those live streamers, I went and met them because I, I just wanted to meet them. I thought it was fantastic. And so they said, yeah, we're having a protest, come. So I thought, okay. And I mean, I'm there with my walking stick and everything, you know, I'm like this old person. And so... But I'm making it around, and it was really fun being with them. And so then I, I get tired, and I think, you know, I need to sit down. And they had always said, you can't ever come across this line, ever, not ever. And they'd always have security around and everything. There's no security now. There's 10 cameras going, right? What? Oh, I say, uh, the, the Audi that Wendy was mentioning, the IIG, you remember that? We rented a bus, and we tried to get in to several buildings. No, it was a different situation. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of the, well, this is a trip we made IIG. You were with us on the bus. First, we went to, I think, uh, what do they call it? It's like big the, blue? The Celebrity Center. Oh. Celebrity Center, yes. And a big sign out there, open house. Right. And we all went up and they saw you were with us. You can't come in. Closed us. Right. We're closed. But then everybody was taking photos and videos of us. So we went to uh, the main office. We had to sit in the bus. They must have called ahead and said, no, you can't come in. I know. That's why with Wikipedia, I said, no, I won't be on it. Went to L. Ron Hubbard Museum. No, you can't come in. I know. They hate me. That's why. Th this is last Christmas. This guy, because I, I, my friends and I, we always go, let's go by the complex and see if anything's happening. So we pull over there. And there's all these lights. It's like Christmas, right? You know, and so this guy, there's nobody there. It's like one guy walking down the street. And I say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And he comes over and I go, what's going on? And he goes, I don't know, but they got nice lights. And I thought, no, he's a Scientologist. And so I said, are you a Scientologist? And he goes, no, I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing here? And he goes, well, my friend is in there. And I go, doing what? And he goes, he's taking the personality test. So I said, all right, get on your phone, call him, get him out here. So he comes out, they bring the security, they, they do come. And uh, so I said, I tell him a little bit about it. I said, don't give him any money. Don't give him your name, don't give him your address, don't give him any money. I'll tell you all about it later. So they come and they take him and they lock the door. And I say to his friend, go, go get him out. And he goes, I can't, the door is locked. So I said, call him up. So he comes back out. And I'm starting a live video by now on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And he comes out, and, he, and he's a wrestler. And he goes, are you doing a live video? And I said, not with you. I'm just doing a live video. And he goes, no, no, you can put me on it. Put me on it. Here's my personality test. So he shows it. And it's like all up and down and up and down. And he goes, they said I'm really crazy. And I said, <laughs> I said they say everybody's really crazy. And they were, he was going to pay, like normally they're 40 bucks for the comm course. That's always how it was. Just to, It's a beginning thing. They had him go, he was going to pay $5,000 for auditing because he was newly divorced. And, and so I said, look, they're going to take you and they really hate me, just so you know. And they're going to tell you lies about me. But just stick, your, stick to your ground. So he goes out. And then he comes back and he's kind of white as a sheet. You know, he looks different and he goes, boy, they really hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just to finish it, I, I was like, I thought I got to call him the next day because it was different than usual. And I, I wanted to make sure he didn't, they didn't get to him and he'd give him the 5,000 bucks. So I get to him. He goes, nah, I didn't give it to him. I'm going to Japan. And I said, okay, good. <laughs> And, and, and I said, just out of curiosity, like, what did they say to you that, you know, because you looked like you were a little freaked out. And he goes, well, they did say you're a deep cover, undercover CIA agent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so now I say that on all my videos. I am a deep cover CIA agent. <laughs> anyway, that's my story. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Was it okay? Okay, yeah. good.
Do you, do you, uh, did you ever work with Michael Dover or Andrea Morris? I don't think so, but I'm really bad with names. Okay. So I might have, I don't think so. What did they do? Um, my understanding is they worked in whatever the Office of Dirty Tricks or whatever. No, so remember, I was a volunteer. Okay. So I wasn't like on staff doing that. No, no, I'm saying they, they worked within that office. Of the, I know, oh, okay. but I, they never let me in that office. Okay, okay, okay. See, I just went over to my friend's house. Okay. So it was all like Bill. They, they, they were the personal assistants of Tom Cruise for a long time. Oh. Now they're the personal assistants of Sky Daily okay. and sort of Earthline. Oh, too bad. I want to make sure, does anybody else have any questions? for? I got we can keep reading for two days. I know, I know. Yeah. We're not going to do that. We just want to, if you have a few more questions, let's make sure we get them in. So any? your story was about you escaping the tactics of the church. At what point did you give up on the tech? I think I gave up on the tick way before I escaped out. You know, it didn't work. Remember, I was on OT7 for seven years. Wow. They came to interview me, their top little kids, and they said, we want to get your wins on OT7. And I said, okay, listen to me carefully. I don't have one win on OT7, not one. And they all turned kind of green. And I said, I have wins on training, but not on auditing. <clears throat> and that was it. So, you know, I was sort of like way, I started reading 10 book, for 10 years I started reading like self-improvement, philosophies, you know, just like, you know, anything, not against Scientology, but just that, and I think that stripped off a lot of the mind control, because these cult experts came to interview me when I first left, and they said, you are the first happy cult member, ex-cult member we've ever met. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind telling us about your, what happened with your husband? Your He's husband? in. He won't talk to me. Was, so so I, on that point, never talked to him. He can't, or he'll be declared suppressive. And he's scared of suppressive. So he's, now that I'm a top secret undercover CAA agent, he's probably like, whoa, I'm really not talking to him. Do you think but, he believes that? Oh, yeah. Do you think he believes you're a CIA person? Well, I, whether that, I know he d believes I'm a suppressive I person. I'm suppressive. Yeah. I just wonder if, yeah. That I don't know. That was a new thing for me at Christmas. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys divorced or not? Oh, yeah. Oh. We had to. Okay. You know, he's staying in. He's yeah. in Scientology. Well, I didn't know if they would even let you go through a divorce process. That means you'd have to mingle the time. Or well, you had to. Yeah. Did you ever have any other interactions? But when I came back, just so you know, my entire house was stripped. And this is a thing I always tell people because you never know what you might say to somebody that could change their life. Right. I, I went to a party. I saw this lady for one conversation. I never saw her again. I never saw her before. I didn't know who she was. She goes, what do you do? And I said, I don't know. I just escaped out of a cult, which I still say to this day. It's 24 right. years later. But I use that line all the time because people go, really, a cult? What cult? You know, and it's a great one for young kids. But <laughs> it is. It is. And I give them my card, and I say, look, they're after you, so, you know, study up on it. But um, anyway, I go to this party. She goes, what do you do? I said, I don't know. I escaped out of a cult. She goes, well, where do you work? And I said, I don't know. I got to get a job. I'm, you know, I'm, I lost everything. And she goes, well, where do you live? And I said, I don't know that either. My husband's kicking me out. And she looks at me, and this lady, I'm telling you, she beamed on me. She goes, Fuck that. <laughs> she goes, you have no credit, I guarantee it. Because this is in 2000. She said, probably all your credit's in your husband's name. Right. Nobody's going to rent you a room anywhere. So you are going to be out homeless. You go home and you kick your husband out. Oh, not, <laughs> and I did. But that was, that, that, isn't that great? I mean, it, it just shows you never know what one thing, yeah, the right thing at the right time, but you never know. Did you ever hear from John Travolta again? What would happen no. You saw him? I did see him. I did see him at the Arrow another time. He had another premiere, and I went there, and he gave me a big hug again. I mean, he won't talk to me. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm a declared suppressor. But he's kind of on the outside a little bit himself. I know it. He's a good guy. Not like Tom Cruise, who is not. <laughs> yes, you. Did you ever meet Lee Ermini? Yeah. Yeah, actually, with Danny Masterson's trial... <clears throat> they call them, um, anyway, one of the women who was raped wanted to meet me. So Leah called me and said, look, she wants to meet you. We're going to pick you up for lunch. 
you know, you're going to come to lunch with us. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and this is kind of weird. In, and apparently in criminal court, like in the big things, like rape things, you have to go through security on the first floor, then you go up to the ninth floor, and you have to go through another security. And everyone has to lock up your, your cell phones. Every person, they give you a little sheath, and it's locked. And you can't, you have to put it through a machine to unlock it at break. So we're there, <coughs> excuse me, and she and I, um, she goes, all right, just follow me. And she knew the security guard, so we go down some secret exit, we get into her limo, we go to this hotel, we have lunch, I talked to the lady just for a few minutes, and then we came back. That, that was it, and I was at the end of her show, at the very end of the, her aftermath show. And I've, I've seen her at a couple of parties, I can't really say we're friends, but you know, I, I, that's it. So anyway, yeah, you. Um. Do you think John Travolta's had any handling when you were declared that because you were overseeing his casework? I wasn't overseeing his casework. I said I helped train him. Oh. So it was like I, he, we were in a course room together and you do drills and I did drills with him. So he liked me. You know, that was it. I, I wasn't overseeing him. And no, I don't think, I, do, I have no idea. You know, it's like there's so much you don't know about Scientology when you're in it. You know, and same with when you're out. I mean, I had parties for 14 years after I left. It started with four people. One of them is one of my best friends, Spanky Taylor, who's in Going Clear. And, and now it, it moved up to like 25, 30 people. Writers were flying in to interview, because these were all the top guys in Scientology that had left. <clears throat> but to this day, we get together and it's like, all right, you were in this room, you were in that room, and I was in this room, so what, what did we do? You know what I mean? Because people are still connecting the dots on what, what did you actually do? It's really spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you do after you left? I was, just worked and was an activist. I'm mainly an activist, but I did sales. I've been in sales for many, many years. And selling different things, but I only sell things that I believe in, and I'm really good at it. And the funny thing is, I am sort of like Lucille Ball, you know. Like I, my mother always had that. Like she was really smart, but she had the Lucille Ball side of her, and I'm kind of like that too. So I go to sell security systems back when they were five thousand dollars. You had to buy the hardware. Excuse me, and it's all engineers, all men, and me, and we have a week long of training. And now we're supposed to go out and sell these things. So I go to this lady's house. I trip in the bushes. I think, okay, Lucille, keep going. <laughs> and this lady's there by herself. And so I do the whole presentation, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, well, let me show it to you. And they have a thing where you can just press a button and it's like Tori to base, Tori to base. And then the base is supposed to come on. It's like, hello, Tori. And so it proves, you know, see, we're always in touch with you, right? And so I'm going like this, Tori DeBase, Tori DeBase, and the lady's sitting there, and I'm going, Tori DeBase, Tori DeBase, and I'm saying it a little louder. And finally she leans back and she goes, you know, I think, I think if it's electronic, you have to have it plugged in. Oh. <laughs> so it's like somehow I make it through, but it's like I am, I, I'm, I am sort of together in certain ways. I'm very together, but in other ways like that, forget it. But I sold it. She clo I closed her on the whole thing, and they didn't close anything. So every meeting, they would laugh at me because I'd say, really, there's a phone in this thing? You know, and they'd all start laughing, and I'd say, you know what? You guys can laugh all you want because my name is at the top of making money. That's all that matters. I laugh all the way to the bank, but you guys can laugh at me. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being such a cool audience, too. You were fantastic.